Hi everyone, let me welcome you to the webinar called Reliable Floor Drainage Connection that ACO and SECO decided to co-host to push drainage process in the food and beverage facilities to another level. All the information you'll be provided with is based on long-term research that both ACO and SECO undergo continuously. First of all, let me introduce you to our hosts. On behalf of ACO Drainage, we are glad to have here Dan Loder, International Key Account Manager for the ACO Group, focusing on the food and beverage segment globally. Hello, everyone. And from SECA, we have Flooring Specialist David Hockley, Key Account Manager in the UK. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. During this webinar, we will show you the main barriers to efficient cleaning, explain how the floor drainage and the whole production system affects cleaning as a complex system, and finally introduce you to simple solutions that ensure your drainage process is supported by reliable infrastructure. Here I pass over to Dan Loder to share his expertise with us. Uh, thank you Sarah again and hello once again everybody. Uh, I'm Dan and I would like to start this webinar with a short question for you to think about. How often during a day do you think about floor or drainage within your facilities? Is it never, maybe once a week, or once a month? We could continue on in this way. As this is not uncommon, and usually both floor and drainage are placed at the bottom of the list of priorities within production facilities. This is mainly due to two reasons. People don't think about it. Either they have already solved the issues that they have, or alternatively, those issues have not yet occurred. Research and unfortunately also recent case studies are proving that floor drains are a favorable environment for microbial growth. Our audience today will be filled with experts on uh, hygiene in food and beverage production. But to provide all of you with a complete background, I have to mention also two forms that microorganisms on floor and drains take, which are free form, in other words, easy to control and destroy, and embedded in biofilm. At this point, I would like to let David introduce principles of floor cleaning in food and beverage facilities. Thanks, Dan. To ensure that your floor system stays in the best shape and helps you maintain hygiene standards, the correct cleaning and maintenance schedule should be used. Looking at cleaning for dry areas, it is important to keep the environment as dry as possible by brushing with well-designed durable brushes and vacuum cleaning. Establishing periodical controlled wet cleaning and in high risk facilities, no drains but fast evaporating disinfecting. In wet processing areas are often cleaned together with production equipment with the same chemicals. It is vital to remove all food products and loose debris at this point. It is also important to apply chlorinated alkaline foam onto the floor by brush or to use a mechanical scrubber to keep the foam dry, rinse the areas to drain and dry. Back to Dan on the drainage main functions. Thank you, David. So let's have a look at the main functions of drainage in production environments. One of the key functions which comes first to mind is interception of effluents. In other words, collecting and accumulating fluids produced in operational and cleaning processes. But that's not where it ends up. Transporting the fluid from one place to another, for example, from the source of wastewater to the outlet, is also an important factor. Actually, that's the one that affects the hygiene the most. And last but not least, the prevention of fluids from impacting other areas, like separating wet and dry areas. A proper barrier between environments ensures non-transference and alleviates the risk of cross-contamination. So, connected with this, what would we say are the three obstacles to effective cleaning? First, let me show you a picture to illustrate. Here we can see a few well-organized environments. Everything seems to be working well. However, following predetermined drainage prerequisites are very difficult to achieve. And to be honest, I have visited many food and beverage factories, and it looks more like the following picture. In other words, uninspectable, overflowing, and wrongly sloped non-hygienic channels or drains. In this example, you, you can see that there are multiple outlets leading to the drainage, but due to too many outlets of closed systems leading to a single drain point, it allows for flooding to occur and puddling. 
this is connected to the first obstacle, which is layout and capacity. The second obstacle is proper cleaning performance. To enable thorough cleaning, it is crucial to think about design of the floor and drainage. That is materials used, sloping, water tightness, cleanability of the corners. I mentioned this since only few solutions on the market are ready to provide appropriate functions. In order to determine the difference between non-hygienic and hygienic design elements, ACO conducted research together with the Fraunhofer Institute on the cleanability comparison of hygienic and non-hygienic drainage. As, in you can, as you can see the results in the slide, the difference is clear and significant. By pure design considerations, the cost and effectivity connected with this cleaning is clear. Actually, we have decided to go even further and due to long-term discussion with eHedge on this basis, we have undergone another cleanability test. This time, which was much more detailed and focused on porosity of used materials and its impact on cleaning. When we introduced hygienic drainage solutions some years ago, we assumed that gratings without frames are much more cleanable due to less debris collection. Hence, we developed a cast stainless steel grating. That started the discussions about cleanability of visibly porous, porous materials. We knew that the cast grating was not perfect and based on discussions with eHedge experts, we underwent porosity testing. You can see on the pictures the black parts representing air and the white parts, which is a cut through the cast grating. It is visible under a microscope as well as with your eyes that this material cannot be 100% cleanable. By the way, in those uncleanable holes, approximately nine cells of bacteria can fit. So we have an almost uh, hygienic solution, which is porous, inflexible, and relatively expensive. What did we do to resolve this issue? For this, we specially developed a fully welded echo hygienic frameless ladder grating, which by the way, you might have come across at the e eHedge Congress in London a few days ago. We underwent the same research and the results were clear. No porosity, as you can see in the image on the top right. We were able to produce all commonly used dimensions and even low glasses of this product. An added benefit being that the cost for the end user was actually even cheaper when comparing with the cost grating. Since this is a new product, we would be happy as always to discuss this solution with you as experts from the field. Please do not hesitate to turn to us with your questions or ideas. It is cru crucial for us to develop new products based on real life issues from daily life. Here, once again, I would like to turn to David, who will tell you more about the production system integration. Thanks, Dan. Before choosing or, or designing or specifying a floor, it is vital that the floor supports your primary production functions by being watertight, easy to clean, resistant to the chemicals and clean agents used in the environment, resistant to dynamic impacts and thermal stress. And for the people working those those environments vitally slip resistant. Common defects you may have come across in flooring include cracks, elevation of the floor plate edges, delamination, dissolution and dispersion. Other defects caused by water or defects such as drain damage caused by falling equipment etc. There are consequences for the integration of the wrong system for the given production area or facility. Failure in a factory floor causes disruption to the factory operations as well as compromising hygiene. This failure leads to downtime and the costs associated with it. This result might be water ingress into the wall. Floor cracks that are a health and safety hazard, not only leaving it open for bacterial growth, but as a trip hazard for staff and personnel. Any breaks in a surface will provide a protected niche environment where bacteria can breed. When cleaning a cracked or jointed surface, bacteria, water and dirt can collect in these areas. This water and dirt can act as a food source for bacteria. The bacteria will then multiply, increasing the potential contamination source. The cracked joint areas protects the microorganisms from standard and cleaning regimes. Therefore, the most hygienic surfaces are seamless, easy to clean and easy to repair. Likewise, puddles on the floor leave you open to slips, trips and falls and create a risk to personnel. Block drainage has consequences that compromises your waterproof system. Dan will now explain this more. Sure, thank you, David. 
An uncompromised waterproof system should cover the following. A waterproof wall protection system, appropriately sloped floors, a reliable floor drain connection, and finally, and most importantly, sufficient drain capacity. A perfectly waterproof system starts at the height of around your knees, and in some cases can evoke similarity to a wash basin you have at home. So David, can we now focus on our common topic? Yes, let's get to it. So reliable floor to drainage connection. Flooring and stainless steel drainage systems form an integral part of a factory floor. Even when they're working well, failure often occurs in the connection between the two. Here are some examples of bad floor and drainage connections that you may have seen before. In this worst case scenario, you can see the breakdown of the connection between the floor and the drainage. A closer look, cultures of bugs have collected, which would fail any hygiene inspection. To help in the quest for greater hygiene standards in food and drink manufacturing, a team of experts from Seeker and Echo carried out a research project, which was the first of its kind. Testing took place over 36 months and set out to determine the best optimal floor drainage connection for the food and beverage sector. We have tested various drainage edge types with various floor types, enabling us to identify the best possible floor drainage combinations. Looking at the dynamic loading, the testing rig enabled us to evaluate performance when different elements were exposed to loads generated by truck wheels of the type used on vehicles commonly used by the food and drink industry. We're able to verify the type of wheel, wheel loading, and wheel speed during testing. Moving on to thermal loading. For this type of test, we developed a testing rig that carried out standardized tests according to EN 1253. The test consisted of hot and cold water cycles. The hot and cold water circulates in samples of the installation channels, which are housed in concrete blocks. Water circulates through the sample in predefined intervals. Hot water at 90 degrees C is superseded by cold water at 15 degrees C, with a one minute break in between each cycle. Here you can see some of the tests carried out. Testing replicates process closest to the practical application within a production facility. Finally, we looked at the shrinkage of the cementitious substrate, as seen within concrete, screeds, and resin mortar installations. This testing method proved that concrete can fail under the channel and around the drainage installation. The test proved that we can prevent concrete breakage under the channel by using various types of anchors, and that ACO is able to design drainage to accommodate expansion grooves anywhere on the floor. For further evaluation purposes, our connection types were also tested, including different types of additional edge profiles and installations with a lack of groove that's usually present at the floor drainage connection. As you can see on the slide, looking at the key seeker flooring systems in the testing process, we have the hybrid seeker floor 21 per sem. This is a cement screed modified polyurethane. This type of material resists medium to high loads, resists abrasion and high chemical loads, is shock resistant and resistant to high temperatures. It is suitable for use in environments exposed to thermal shock, such as freezers, cold and wet and dry areas. It has high chemical resistance properties and has a similar performance to concrete with regard to cohesion and strength and performs at a higher level with regards to mechanical resistance cracking when installed without working joints. The second system you can see on the slide is our polyurethane Seeker Floor 326. This is a polyurethane elastic and self-leveling compound with a sand surface. This is suitable for normal to moderate mechanical and chemical stress, wet areas within the food and beverage industry. It's resistant and flexible, mechanically resistant with anti-skid properties and is very easy to maintain. Thank you, Dan. The solutions for the testing that ACO took place 
were without most commonly supplied hygienic box channel with the standard dimensions. Moving on to the conclusions of the test and research project, the preliminary test results show promising outcomes with certain types of edge profiles. The standard edge profile, which is connected directly to the floor, proved to be resistant in situations where dynamic stress is present. This is often present in areas with heavy and frequent traffic. The load class of the whole system has to be considered accordingly. Common applications for this detail include warehouses and corridors. The second detail you can see here is the standard edge connected to the floor with a flexible joint. This is the best option when exposed to temperature extreme and rapid changes of hot and cold water. Common applications for this detail include CIP areas, wet production and commercial kitchens. The third and final detail that you can see here is the standard edge connected with a flexible joint and supporting stainless steel L profile. This is for sites where drainage floor connection needs to be resistant to both thermal and dynamic shocks. Common applications for this detail include where there is forklifts, bottle washing and wet production with traffic. So to sum it up, there are three types of floor to drain connection that ensure a reliable performance during your cleaning process. For high dynamic loading, which can be found in warehouses or corridors, standard drain edge should be connected directly to the floor. In spaces like clean in, in spaces like clean in place or commercial kitchen, where the floor is exposed to high temperatures, connect the floor to the drainage with a flexible expansion joint. The most common advanced solution that is res uh, resistant to both thermal and uh, dynamic shocks is called the L-profile edge and combines flexible joint with stainless steel profile added to the drain. At the end of this webinar, I recommend one thing. Each room in your factory requires a specific solution. The L-profile, which you see installed in this picture, is the really most advanced solution, but honestly does not always need to be relevant to, the, to your needs. The best way to be sure you get what you want is to talk to your experts at Sika or ACCO. In conclusion, ACCO is a global hygienic drain, drainage consultant and producer with a local presence in more than 40 countries worldwide, with over 30 production facilities and almost 5,000 employees around the world. We would be happy to consult with you any of your drainage needs, and might you be interested in details, please do not hesitate to contact me as ACCO's international key account manager or visit our website www.aco-buildingdrainage.com. Sika has subsidiaries in 100 countries around the world, manufactures in 200 factories. We invest heavily in research and development to bring innovative products to our customers that are fit for purpose. If you'd like to find out more about Seeker or require any further information on the systems that you've seen today, please get in contact with myself or visit our website www.seeker.co.uk forward slash floor. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we've come to the end of the webinar now and um, a video link of the webinar together with the thesis summarising the whole of the ACCO and Seeker research will be emailed to you afterwards. If you'd like further information or any of the supporting products and services offered by ACO or Seeker, please feel free to get in contact with us and thank you for your time.